Today we're going to talk about water management, and this applies to any kind of painting where you use a medium to thin the paint. So let's get started. Ah, the management of water. Well, first of all, please uh, forgive me because I spell management wrong here. <laughs> because, because I'm an artist and, uh, uh, you know, art first, spelling second. But anyway, I spelled management wrong, but, uh, but the lesson is correct. So water management, um, let's see. Um, it's really important in watercolor to be able to manage water. So let's talk about that for a minute because water is an essential element, just like fire. Think about water and fire. Man has been trying to control fire and water since time began. So you have to forgive yourself for not being able to manage water really well at first because it is, um, it's, it's skill-based. So, First of all, have the best brush possible. I use a Maestro Series Da Vinci Kalinsky Red Sable. Now, the reason that I use that brush is because it doesn't leave any hairs behind and it will hold a lot of water and a lot of pigment. So we're, we'll talk about brushes a different time. I'm just saying don't, don't expect to get good results from a really bad brush. All right, so here is what I consider the real secret here. I call it paint, water, wipe, paint, water, wipe paint, water, wipe. And I am constantly doing that. So for example, if I'm going to put a triad in an area, I've already mixed up these colors, uh, the, the Naples yellow, the rose, and the cerulean blue. And they're basically thin. And what I do then is I put my brush in that thin paint, I apply it to the paper, then I put it in the water and wipe. Then I put it in the rose and apply it to the paper, put it in the water and wipe. I am constantly wiping my brush. Now what I'm showing is what happens if you go between colors and don't wipe your brush. I know it looks sort of okay in that particular um, shape, but if I kept going, you'll see that what happens is the colors start to neutralize and will become one. That will end up being an overall sort of pink. That's the result if I don't wipe my brush in between. Now I don't dry my brush in between going into those different paint uh, mixes, but I wipe it on a towel not a paper towel, but like a, uh, I, I use a dishcloth. So the br brush is always damp, but not wet and not, uh, I mean, not, it's damp, but not drippy. All right, so paint, water, wipe, paint, water, wipe, paint, water, wipe. <laughs> that, that's just really, really important. And I've done other videos about that. Um, now here's another example of what happens if you apply a background to something before it's completely dry. You see what happens there. You end up with a very blurry effect which is fine. Let's say you have something in the distance and you want it to be blurry. That would be a reason for doing that effect. But if you don't, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that tree form dry and we'll come back to it. All right, now we have a, um, now we have a drippy thing. You know, that kind of drippy thing, I haven't gone into, uh, I haven't wiped the brush. When I don't wipe the brush, what happens is you end up not being able to control the water. And so the result is, most of the time people end up using that brush and rub because they go back because they can't control the water and that that you know they want to stop the dripping and what happens is you saw how diluted the color got when i did that now i'm applying paint to the bottom um and again i haven't dried it uh, or dry across a cloth first so there's no control now, there are many people that want to have that. I like to have control. So here's an example where I'm doing my paint, water, wipe, paint, water, wipe, paint, water, wipe. First of all, there are no drips because my brush went into the mix of uh, the, the paint and, um, and then wiped on the cloth. Same thing here. Went into the well of paint, wiped on a cloth, no drips. So I can keep those colors separated and I'm not going to end up with that blooming effect. All right, so now, now here's a little bit more work. What happens if you want to use uh, three colors? And remember, the paper I'm working on is always dry and it's 140 pound weight arch. There's a rose and I'm putting some um, Naples yellow on top of it, which I can do as long as things are wet. So now I wiped the brush on the cloth and I just gently pick up those drips. Now the reason I do that is so that I have control and also because if I don't, you might have a balloon effect. In other words, when the edges dry, there'll be a ballooning that goes back. So I like to, if there's a drip left, I like to use my damp brush to pick it up. 
Now here's an example of going into, uh, <laughs> if something is not sufficiently dried, which is why you see me use the hair dryer all the time, and you try to apply another color on top of it, that is going to be the result. You end up with that balloon, uh, blue, ballooning thing that happens. Uh, no control and um, someplace I like to avoid as much as I can. Balloons happen, but um, but I like to control for that if I can. There, there was the cloth. So you can see me wiping this uh, number 12 uh, Kalinsky Sable brush on the cloth. Oh, it, there we go. See, I wipe it so it's damp and pick up that drip. And I pick up, see, I'm picking up the drips because the, the water will always go toward a drier object, um, especially if it's as feathery as a brush. Ah, one more thing. All right, the other thing that I forgot is also in terms of consistency um, and being able to manage a water, which is really an unmanageable thing, just like a wild horse, is to be able to um, make sure that your color well mixes are approximately the same uh, thickness. So you saw me use washes before, and now this is thicker paint. Again, I'm doing that paint, water, wipe, paint, water, wipe, paint, water, wipe. My paint, I mean, I dip into the paint, and then I wipe it and apply it to the paper, and then I go back to my water, back to my, back to my paint well, and wipe. I never go toward the paper without wiping my brush first, ever, which is uh, maybe surprising. But if there's a secret to this thing, it is making sure that you are managing the amount of water on your brush. And in order to do that, it does take practice. But don't be discouraged because, like I said, water, since time began, man's been trying to make it to stay in places. And water will always go where water wants to go. So um, cut yourself some slack. Uh, make some squares and do some practice. And if you have specific questions that I can answer, please let me know. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.